I live in an area of California recognized over the world as being called Silicon Valley. And one small part of that valley is a city called Saratoga. Saratoga is known as a tree city and I find great enjoyment in identifying tree anomalies. I also find a lot of interest in looking at the, the selection of trees that were put in that are designated as what are known as street trees. A street tree is a species of tree that is put between the asphalt and the sidewalk in that little tiny narrow strip. Well this tree that I want to talk about here is called the Modesto Ash and Saratoga planted lots of Modesto Ash trees back in the 50s. At the time, the Modesto Ash was a newly discovered tree. It was discovered in 1927 in Modesto, California as an interesting anomaly from the Arizona Ash and it was unique and thought to be a, a wonderful, wonderful tree. But there are a lot of problems with this tree. And as they developed over time, came to be recognized as a tree that's susceptible to a disease called anthracnose. It's a leaf disease. It's also got very brittle crotches and is prone to decay, as well as roots that come up and lift sidewalks. There's a bit of fungus there in this tree that's about ready to self-destruct. So in my city, Saratoga, there are still so many old street trees that really ought to be eradicated. They should be completely removed, but you can imagine the uproar that the community would have if all of a sudden the city came in and said, we're going to start over. We're going to destroy the beauty of your neighborhood. But from these little clips here, you can see all the problems that are developing. So there's another tree that I want to talk about uh, that has been used as a, a street tree. Oh, there's an interesting mess of a tree. That's a We'll talk about that one another date. I don't know why that is even in there. It's not a street tree, but it's a it's a big atlas cedar that's been butchered by the power company. Well, I was driving down this busy street in Sunnyvale, California, and I had to pull over for this. Would you look at that burl? That is truly remarkable. I'm giving you guys a minute to uh, try to identify this tree. I haven't shown anything other than the bark and some of the leaves. I'll give you just a minute here. I'll back up and there's the upper canopy. This is a tree that was planted as a street tree. But if you look down the street there, that one does not have a burl like this, nor do any of the others all the way down. This is a southern magnolia, and it is a fairly good lawn tree. Interestingly, there's lawn here, but this tree is only getting support from about uh, half of what it should have. So it's not as large as it could be, but look at that burl. Now I've milled magnolia a few times, and it's kind of a, kind of a dull, not even a real pretty, color it's sort of almost a gray wood um, it's a sound wood it holds up pretty well but there's nothing magnificent about it but burl on the other hand ah when I see something like this I I'm always perplexed because someday it's gonna break the sidewalk someday the city's gonna say let's get rid of that damn thing it was hit by a vehicle at one time so what will happen is They'll come in with their tree crew, and they'll cut this thing down, they'll cut this all the way to the base, they'll grind it all up, they'll throw it in the dumpster and it'll get thrown away, and nobody will think, maybe there's something valuable in here, maybe there's some incredible burl wood. I hate it when that happens. You know, there's so much, I don't even know what the right word for it is, ignorance? There's so much ignorance when it comes to wood. And there's some potential in here uh, for some just absolutely magnificent swirly pieces or not. I've never seen what magnolia burl looks like but any burl wood has swirls and different types of um, grain configurations 
and, and sometimes you can do some interesting things even if it's not a pretty wood you can often um, stain it or dye it or or get some real character out of it now, I'm not saying to cut the tree down but eventually it's going to go and if you look down the street this is what a magnolia root system is more consistently like it's uh you know i've cut down some big magnolia trees where the the roots have been like this over the entire yard and if you look at this you can see roots are coming up over here and this whole lawn is is raised up and if you were to extract the sod all you would see would be roots like this over this entire area so a lot of people um, end up hating these trees because of the damage that they do to their yards. And uh, to give this tree a little bit more room, they did a, a reduction in the sidewalk size rather than grinding out all these roots. And I see that a lot. Sometimes they'll come in, the cities will come in with stump grinders or root cutters and they just obliterate the entire root system uh, but they were quite a bit more respectful on this tree. They gave it a little bit of space. You can see it's a new sidewalk and the sidewalk is actually kind of raised up and over. And when you look up at the power lines, you see that this tree was a bad choice from the very get-go. Why would you plant a giant species underneath the power lines? There's one that's lacking in water and it's not doing too well and adjacent to it is uh, a relatively healthy looking tree both of these trees are in about the same type of environment i'm going to guess that the tree on the right has more of its root system underneath the asphalt and it got real hot and real dry there's rocks over in that area this area has more of a natural uh, dirt and uh, irrigated area so uh, the, the southern magnolia needs a lot of water so if you're in a dry environment uh, don't don't plant the southern magnolia you know its botanical name is magnolia grandiflora and it has big beautiful white flowers but most people end up hating this tree and it's green all year round but it's also ever shedding and the, because the flowers are so big, it drops all the, the petals and all the mess from the flowers. The leaves are constantly dropping. When it produces the red patches of seeds, those fall off and they're constantly messy. So a lot of people end up cutting these things down just because they get tired of the mess. But all said and done, a grand magnolia in a good location uh, in the back 40 on a lawn is something to behold, especially when it's in full bloom.